a more question for Colleen and one for Gordon. If we have a bonus to those two questions. The, the question for Colleen is the following. Uh, did you notice any connection between the level of opposition to dam removal and the river typology, the river style? So in relation to the fact that the, the appreciation in terms of landscape or recreation may be different? Um, yes. Um, for the most part, there, uh, it may seem relatively obvious, but the most resistance to removal often came from dams that were, Thank you. Um, that were in the center of town. They're urban, slightly more urban, even though the, the, village, the towns are quite small. So uh, it has a lot to do with visibility. And it gets back to that idea of the perceptible realm, what people see every day. Having said that, occasionally there are, um, oh, there are uh, examples of dams that are not in the center of town, and there's quite a bit of resistance. But certainly urban dams. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with how attractive the dam is, because some of them are quite um, unattractive or in disrepair, but still, um, people, people are attached to them. So I would say that it's the most. Uh, so more of the location than the river style, let's say. I don't believe that we've seen that in in New England so much. Um, uh, most of the dams that have been taken out have been um, uh, in the upper reaches of the watershed. So. Um, you know, maybe that has something to do with it, but I would say no particular discernible pattern. And very short question to Gordon. Uh, do you have any experience of successful dam removal in case of uh, polluted sediments uh, accumulating? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, the, the contaminated sediments um, are like the uh, elephant in the room. <laughs> For dam removal, um, the there is a history that goes back to the 1970s of people taking dams out without looking for sediment uh, contamination. In the, there was a dam in New York, up, upstate New York, the Fort Edwards Dam, that had a large volume of uh, PC contaminated sediment. And when they took the dam out, they released that sediment and it created uh, an enormous toxic problem that extended for hundreds of kilometers. Um, a slightly different example occurred in Montana where sediment that had become contaminated from copper mines was also released, but it was less of a problem. The, the, the basic issue is if you have contaminated sediment you cannot let the river have free access to it. You have to figure out what to do with it, either to remove it, to dredge it, to isolate it. But it, it, it is a real problem. Merci pour uh, ces premières questions. Il y en a-t-il d'autres? Merci, monsieur. On va vous passer le micro. Merci de lever la main encore qu'on puisse vous repérer. On va vous le faire passer un demain en main. Voilà, merci de faire circuler le micro. Nous vous écoutons. Merci. Est-ce que... Alors, ma question va s'adresser à nos deux intervenants étrangers. Est-ce que dans vos pays respectifs, vous avez été confronté à un problème de lobbying assez actif, assez agressif Euh, des producteurs d'hydroélectricité, comme par exemple, euh, ça peut être le cas sur le climat avec des, euh, voilà, des climato-sceptiques qui euh, voilà, cherchent à nier le réchauffement climatique. Voilà, en France, on a une partie, en tout cas, des producteurs d'hydroélectricité qui, euh, quelque part, essayent de faire considérer que la restauration des rivières, enfin, l'enlèvement des barrages, n'a pas de bénéfice euh, écologique. Est-ce que voilà, vous avez eu ce genre de choses Quel impact ça a pu avoir si ça en a eu un Euh, 
Um, in, in the New England case, um, very often the hydropower advocates are, um, it's a little different. They are arguing for micro hydropower, even though it's often not feasible. So they use more of the um, green energy, clean energy argument. Um, you do see very often uh, as part of the resistance to removing larger dams, the argument that hydropower is absolutely necessary um, for the economy and um, again, sort of from an environmental perspective and maybe a bit cynically on the part of hydropower companies. So for example, on the Columbia rivers, there's their um, proposal to remove a number of um, dams in the upper reaches, but um, but the argument is that the Northwest is, needs that hydropower. It's essential for the economy and that it's the best option um, environmentally. So do you, do you see the hydropower industry sort of arguing for um, green power as a way to halt dam removals in any of the Northwest cases? This is, this is a good question. Uh, what I see happening is the power companies are primarily being driven by economics and in the Northwest. And so the issues around the environment uh, or even green power are primarily um, a way of forward something that ultimately I think is an economic argument. So for example, there is a major effort to remove four large dams on the Klamath River. These are perfectly good hydropower dams. They produce, I forget what the megawattage is, but, but it's a lot. I mean, compared to everything I saw yesterday, where you are looking at small hydropower projects that produce 50 kilowatts, 100 kilowatts. These produce tens, if not hundreds of megawatts. These are big hydropower projects. What is driving them to consider dam removal is that it is getting too expensive to relicense the dams given the environmental cost of maintaining fish and fish passage. And they do that balance and if it, if it doesn't look like it's going to be in their favor, then what they try to do is get the best deal they can so that they don't have to assume all the costs of removing the dams. This is where, this is an interesting thing that happens is that the power companies will turn around to the state or even to the federal government and say, ah, wouldn't you like us to take this dam down? If you give us support, if you support us, we will, we will move in that direction. So they kind of hold the dam hostage and we will be. Merci à nos amis américains très sollicités dans vos questions, mais vous avez raison, c'est une façon aussi de profiter de leur, de leur présence aujourd'hui. Une dernière question peut-être avant, avant la pause, est-ce qu'il y a encore une intervention Oui, monsieur, vous passe le micro. Merci de vous présenter, si vous ne vous étiez pas déjà intervenu. Oui, bonjour, Martin Jovano, la télé territoire. Euh, ma question s'adressait donc à nos interlocuteurs américains. Je voulais savoir par rapport aux cartes qui avaient été présentées, pourquoi il y avait une telle variabilité géographique au niveau des zones où euh, il y a eu des effacements d'ouvrage. On a l'impression que le nord des États-Unis, notamment le, le nord-est, est plus concerné que une bonne partie du territoire, le sud par exemple. Est-ce qu est -ce que c'est lié à des politiques spécifiques euh, état par état ou est-ce qu'il y a des problème de l'eau dans certaines zones des États-Unis et dans d'autres pas, comment est-ce qu'on peut expliquer cette variabilité au niveau géographique um, the, if, if you remember the map that both Colleen and I showed the Pacific Northwest 
has uh, some, but does not have most of the dam removals in the country. I think most of the dams are in, in the northeast, in Colleen area. And that's just because the number of dams is much greater there. Keep in mind that most dams are small, fall in that small category. And there are many, many, many more small dams that have come out and are likely to come out than the large dams. The Pacific Northwest has very, uh, has a couple of factors that promote the dams being uh, famous removals, if you will. Um, the rivers are larger, generally. Uh, the fish issues are, in a sense, national scale issues. People, everyone knows about the salmon issues. And so the removal of dams has a kind of almost iconic, um, um, it's a kind of iconic action that I think favors the Northwest as perhaps a more natural landscape than the Northeast. But what do you, what do you? Um, yeah, I would agree that salmon and endangered fish drive a lot of dam removals in places like the Pacific Northwest. In New England, it, it has to do with politics as well because we have very powerful local select boards, <coughs> local governance, so while they can resist dam removals, they can also be very active in promoting dam removal. So um, people have a lot of power to, to remove a dam. They don't necessarily have to wait for any um, authority and it, they're generally not um, productive. So they are, um, as in France, they're mid remnants very often of a, a past productive landscape. So it's just much easier to remove them than there are 14,000 of them in New England. So um, I think there are political issues and environmental issues that explain the Northwest and the Northeast. Merci, Colleen. Uh, thank you to take your headphones, please, because I, I'm going to, to ask you a new question, but I trust our, our translators. If you don't mind, I would ask my question in French. Uh, une question de, de nature uh, culturelle. On a vu sur l'une de vos photos la présence de ce que vous appelez les Native American. On a vu des, euh, donc les tribus, les représentants des tribus. Est-ce qu'ils ont un rôle particulier dans les, dans les manifestations, dans la pression qui est faite pour justement la, la restauration des rivières, notamment dans l'Est des États-Unis Est-ce qu'ils ont un rôle euh, particulier dans cette démarche um. This is, I actually have another research project on Native Americans and dam removal. And in the United States, the federal government is, and FERC, uh, the Federal Energy Relicensing Commission, is required to consult with, um, with Native Americans on dam removals if, they're, if they have treaty rights um, uh, to a particular river. So Native Americans are involved in many of the removals that Gordon's worked with because of their treaty rights and endangered uh, species. And in other cases, rivers have uh, spiritual and cultural significance for tribes. And tribes can also access federal funds, um, which can be used for dam removal. So there's a the largest uh, river restoration project in the Great Lakes region is actually being um, facilitated by the Grand Traverse Band of Chippewa and Ottawa Indians. They're removing three dams on the Boardman River and um, uh, altering another one. Um, and it's really their community which has pushed the dam removal. The Penobscot River, Penobscot, Indians, the Elwha Dam in the Olympic Peninsula, uh, the Lower Clayellum Tribe pushed that. The Klamath Dams in Oregon are also um, are being um, the removal is being pushed by the by the Native Americans. So it's actually a, a quite an interesting topic, and there are political, legal, cultural reasons that tribes can um, promote dam removal. Thank you.